But we don't do that, do we? No. It's easy to just ignore them. You know, ignore that stuff. You know, it's, it's easier to just, well, <laughs> clearly, 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 Germans are bound to be evil people. Even the Romans knew it. Therefore, we should just call everything German evil. And that's that. You know, we can't let Germany have any kind of national pride. That'll instantly lead to pogroms and concentration camps. So, no national pride. Hate yourselves, Germans. Hate yourselves. Hell, hate yourselves, German-Americans. Hate yourselves, third, fourth, fifth generation offspring of German-Americans. Hate yourselves for having any kind of remote interest in what actually happened instead of just simply understanding it out of the womb. Now this this idea of amputation kind of sticks pretty hard in the idea of reactionism, uh, reactionaries. Reactionaries look into the past because they feel that the present is lacking. They feel that the present is lacking, that the past has um, what uh, what Davis Arini calls a sane metric. They look at things like the not only the the demerits, not only the bad things, but also the good things about monarchy, about religion, about nationalism, merits of pride, scientific advances, nuclear, nuclear technology stands to mind. You know, everyone's like, oh, look at that Fukushima plant. Look at all those horrible things. Look at Chernobyl. Oh, look at nuclear bombs blowing up Hirosh Hiroshima and Nagasaki. Nuclear power is bad. Let's do absolutely nothing to make it any safer and, you know, bring out greater potentials, and let's just simply call it evil and let's stick to coal. You know, let's, let's send little kids into coal mines so they can uh, get chopped to pieces and suffocate and die in uh, coal fires, you know. So, what I'm, say what I'm saying here is that not all of these things, not all of these bits and pieces of history, not all these ideologies, not all of these things are 100% good. Prussia was not 100% good. But it was not 100% evil, either. And I'm pretty sure that there really isn't anything that is 100% good or evil in this world. There's always going to be some remnant of selfishness of envy, of something that will tarnish even the best of intentions. And ultimately we care about results rather than intentions, because intentions don't really get anywhere. But you know what I mean. You know. But here we have a perfect example, German history, German virtues, Prussian virtues, and we write them off entirely. Now you might say, oh, that's crazy, JDM, you know... We don't think that industriousness is a bad thing. We think industriousness is a good thing. See, clearly we don't write off all Prussian virtues. Well, when is the last time um when was the last time someone referred to America in a good light as a very industrious people? When was the last time you heard of the American military being described as a highly disciplined, well-motivated, loyal group, you know, which protects and safeguards the nation and its people. When was the last time you heard, well, maybe not for the United States, when was the last time you heard Germany, Germans, having pride in Germany, saying that we are proud of our country, that our country has a good and illustrious history? That no matter all the bad things which have happened, there have also been good things, and that we are not prepared to toss away all of it simply because of that. That we're not going to live in fear due to things that we haven't even done, and which things that other people are unrightfully holding us accountable for. That we're going to shoot ourselves in the foot. You don't hear that. I mean, at best, these contrary opinions, these contrary ideas, we pay them a glance. Oh, well, those are Nazis. Oh, well, that's right. Nazis are inherently bad. That's it. Case closed. End of class. Go home. If we really cared about how evil the Nazis were, how evil Germans are, we would have a very in-depth discussion about Nazi Germany. 
we would pull in sources from all over the place, including propaganda, but also including handwritten accounts. And we would look at things like the diaries of people pre- and post-war. We would look at things like the actual things that people said during the Nuremberg trials. We would look at all of the cases where the Allies were not quite as good as we always hold them up to be. We would take it rationally. We would look at all things from as many perspectives as, as possible, and we would come up with a justifiable decision. Now, I highly doubt that anybody is going to do that complete analysis and then say that Nazi Germany was the best thing ever. They're not going to. I'm not going to. Nobody who is sane and has any kind of sense of human decency, who cares at all about their fellow man, is going to say that it was the best idea ever. But it wasn't the worst idea ever. The worst idea ever was to simply nuke the entire planet, and then that's that. That's the worst idea ever. There were things which the Nazis, if not the Nazis, then the Germans who were around them, did, which were not that bad. Military feats of arms, which were brilliant. Economic and scientific advances, which were insane, that we're still riding on the laurels of. But we don't think about that. We don't think in those terms. And, well, the vast majority don't think in those terms. Those that do, well, uh, for all intents and purposes, that's probably a great intellectual barometer. The people who refuse to stick to simple one-sided party lines, the people who actually explore these, the, the people who take devil's advocate positions, the for nothing other than intellectual exercise. And if these people can do that, and then still stick rigidly to a party line, well, maybe kudos for trying, but you're really intellectually dishonest. Because you will always find that there are things which you should not be completely diehard about. This refusal, this this refusal to amputate, to take one bad thing and to completely write off everything else because of it, is the definition of moderation. It's the definition of being a moderate, of being somebody who is derisively called on the fence, but in reality acknowledges the complexity of the situation and doesn't want to make bad decisions. You know, moderates, I've always seen that moderates have an inclination to common sense. They don't have knee-jerk reactions as often. Now, everyone will always have their own biases. They will always have some little nangling prejudices, which they may or may not shake as time goes by, as they learn and live and love and so on and so forth. But moderate people who refuse to simply jump on a bandwagon, who refuse to accept the majority mob around them saying, don't think, do, and do what we say. Don't think about what you do, do it. The people who refuse that are moderates, and they're hated for it. But they're right. They may not be quite as decisive. They may have to rely on certain hard lines to get things done when the, it, when the situation is too complex to allow for some perfect solution. So yes, there is some basis in that idea that they're on the fence. But they're not going to be the ultra-evil Nazis. And they're not going to be the ones who completely forget history so that it can be repeated again. The only reason that modern reactionaries are called reactionary is because so much has already been amputated. <laughs>